What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show, the podcast episode, whatever episode number it is. Today, we have a very important episode because we're talking about the tech test. The tech test uh, has come and gone. It ends 10 a.m. Eastern time today, the day you're listening to this podcast. So in all likelihood, you have finished your tech test experience. Um, <clears throat> I encourage you in the comments, on Twitter, in my email, wherever you want, whether you listen to this episode today, two weeks from now, whenever, let me know what you thought about the tech test. I'm genuinely curious, and this is not even for the YouTube algorithm. I am genuinely curious people's opinions on the tech test because by and large, we're going to go into the nitty gritty, but by and large, I'm kind of feeling pretty enthused. I'm, I'm, it used to just be hopeful. Now that I've seen a little of it in action, I actually feel okay. I feel confident is still not the right word. That's a little too overtly positive. Um, but certainly not negative. Now, as I said, there are certain little things here and there that we're going to talk about that aren't great. My plan for reviewing the tech test, I did not take notes. You guys know how we do it here. We go off the top of the dome. We do it live. So what I'm going to do, do, excuse me, is go through pretty much every menu in Diamond Dynasty in, and the whole tech test, really, uh, and just talk about things that I observed, things that I like, things that I dislike, things that are good, bad, and ugly. Bad are things we can live with that we don't love, but they're like, whatever. Ugly is like, SDS, look at me, fix this now. Uh, excuse me. Also, if you've yet to do so, this is, this is, for real serious, please give your feedback on the tech test. Uh, MLB The Show tweeted a couple of ways you could do it. I think you can go to the show.com. You could do it on the companion app if you log in. Um, give honest feedback, please. Don't. Be annoying, don't be facetious, don't be uh, presumptuous, condescending, pick an SAT word, don't be any of them. Just be honest, be nice, and uh, really give constructive feedback. Because, like I said, we have advanced beyond hope. It's, it's, it's still not confidence, but it's beyond hope. And if we're beyond hope, that means we have something here, potentially. So let's make sure that in these last... Five weeks, four and a half weeks that they have to, to get this game right, that they do that, that they get this game right. Okay, into the game. So, you load up the tech test, bingo, bango, bongo, this is what you see. They did one different event for every day the tech test was live. Um, I didn't care to really play any of the events. I played co-op, I played BR, and I just kind of messed around in custom practice. Um, full disclosure, when it comes to co-op, I am not... Generally speaking, a large fan of co-op. I had a fun time playing with Shane. Uh, shout out Shane Payne. Uh, we went 2-0, by the way. We're amazing. Uh, and, and if you're playing with a with a, a friend or, a, or an internet buddy who's not dog poopy at the game, you can win games. But co-op for me, I like to just have my fate in my own hands. Um, Ants tweeted about this, that he hopes that co-op rewards are the same as World Series rewards, uh, Ranked Seasons rewards. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, some people are going to want to play one, one player ranked. Some people are going to want to be two player co-op. You should not make somebody have to play both. That's just my opinion. It also makes it easier to keep up with the content, etc., etc. All right. That was just a little tangent here. We're going to get to co-op in a moment. Diamond Dynasty. Things I liked, things I didn't, things that suck. So very first, we're going to go backwards here. We're going to start with, um, we don't really need to start with packs. There's nothing to say about packs. We'll start with the squad. My squad. First things to note here, before we even look at the lineup, the DH spot now means you have four bench hitters. That should have been abundantly clear anyway, um, but we're just going to make sure you guys all see that, okay? I'm actually going to lower my game volume here just a little bit because I think it was a little too loud before and we don't need it to be as loud. Um, so, this means bench building is going to be different. Two lefties, two righties is probably still the move. Switch hitters are always better, especially if they can hit both sides. But now one of your hitters has to have a little speed. Now, of course, we will be using pinch hitters theoretically less often because we don't have to hit for a pitcher anymore. But it's just important to note that bench construction, bench, comp bench composition will be a little different. Getting to the lineup screen in general. I despise this lineup screen. <laughs> it looks cool. But like, all right, so right now, everybody, if you're listening, just hear me out here and try to visualize. If you're watching, you'll see. I am hovering over my left fielder, Jordan Alvarez. When I hit the right D-pad button, you would expect it to go to Brian Reynolds in center field. No, it goes to third base. 
Listen, that's not the biggest deal in the world, but it's incredibly stupid. So let's just make it go from left to center to right. Instead, it goes left, third, short, center, second, first, right. That doesn't make a lick of sense. So I don't care for that. Please fix it. Secondly, the lineup, because they've stretched the field across this entire screen, is on another side. This is kind of okay. I don't mind this. I think they need to make it a little more clear that that's where the lineup is instead of this little tiny toggle arrow thing that's partly underneath my face. If you guys are watching on YouTube, you can kind of see it. Um, but I don't mind. This lineup screen is clean. I very much like this. You can see the card and its attributes right next to the, the lineup. You can see your bench very clearly. This looks nice. I love this. Clean. This, however, with all the player cards and the diamond, is stupid. Needs to be fixed. This for me, you're going to think I'm stupid, goes under the ugly category. It is not game-breaking, but goddamn is it annoying, so make it go away. Uh, I also don't like that to get to your bench and pitchers, mostly to your pitchers, you just keep scrolling down. Maybe it's just because I'm not used to it. I'm used to just hitting one of the triggers and it goes over there. Um, but this is now what picking your pitchers looks like or, or organizing your rotation looks like, and this is your bullpen. I have no problem with the bullpen screen. It, just talking strict aesthetics here, design purposes, maybe I would take these bottom three and center them along with the top row so it looks better. But that's like, listen, that's a, that's a giant, not a big deal thing. I'm just, I have OCD sometimes. Um, other than the fact that the starting pitching screen and then subsequently the bullpen is underneath the hitting, I have no problems with the way it's presented. It looks fine. The big issue for me with the lineup screen is this is sheer stupidity that if I want to get to center field from left field, I have to go to third and short first. Listen. Oh, by the way, the only way to get to the catcher is you if you hit down from anywhere in the infield or center field. If you hit down from center field, you get to the catcher. It's just silly. It's just silly to me. Is it is it inconsequential? Sure. Does it make a difference? Absolutely not. But it's annoying, and I'd like it fixed. You want my you want my unfiltered, constructive criticism? You're getting it right here in this podcast episode. And these are all things I'm going to relay to SDS. In the tech test review, I might just give them the link to this episode. I don't know if that's possible, but I might. Um, customized team, I haven't tried doing any of that. Uh, so that's, that's fine. That's just the My Squad screen. You, at the end of the day, as long as I can make my own squad, it'll be fine. But let's let's make the ease of doing so a little better, you know? Okay, so we start with Battle Royale. There's really nothing different here to report. I kind of like, assuming this is the color scheme we're going with, I kind of like the way it looks. I love the dark background with the grayed out uh, rotation, squad attributes, menu options at the bottom. It just looks clean. I played a, a handful of BR games, and I will say, having the DH didn't negatively impact BR like I thought. Now, I've read a lot of people's thoughts, people who I consider buddies, people who I respect, who think that pitchers should still hit in three inning game modes, events, BR, etc. Conquest, I guess, but that doesn't matter. It should instigate the opponent or yourself to take a pitcher out in whatever certain instance in which your DH or your nine batter is going to come up. But I actually think it made me more cog... This might not make sense to a lot of people, but to me it does. I think it made me more cognizant of my pitcher. Because I didn't have to hit with him. I had to pay attention to him on the mound and be like, oh, his stamina's bad. Oh, my opponent's starting to take really good swings. Let's not wait until he comes up. Let's just yank him now. So... I, that's maybe just the way I operate. Everyone else is going to operate and handle their pitchers differently. But it made me think like, oh, let's not push for an extra out. I don't have to waste a bench bat. Let's just take homie out the game. So uh, that is not necessarily something that SDS can control. That is just a product of how baseball now works with the new rules. Um, so I'm going to call it a good. Again, it's not something SDS can really control. Um, anything really on here? Not so much. I mean, this looks clean. I like the way the BR Flawless Pack looks. You guys can't see it because my face is in front of it. Uh, the BR Program screen is really no different. So that's nothing to report here. Forfeit entry. Don't need to do that right now. But I guess it doesn't matter because I'm not playing this again. Uh, this is the player card screen, by the way. We'll do this while we're here. I think it looks nice. Uh, there's clearly a bug here because Shane Baz's 82 stamina is registering as zero. That's just a bug. They'll fix that. It's a visual glitch. It's not a big deal. Uh, quirks. No quirks. Sucks to suck. He has no quirks. 
I do want to see something while we're here that reminded me. We'll go back to this. We're going to keep going through every single thing. I'm going to the community market for a moment. Because I would like to find Brooks Robinson. As Shelfie Wise... Oh, they got rid of it. It's not here anymore. We're not going to talk about this. But uh, it leaked, or it was in the tech test and they removed it. The captain attribute for what Brooks Robinson has... And what the things do, what the attributes do, it'll, it'll like, if you meet certain qualifications, it'll be like, okay, if you have this captain on your team and you have this type of team build, everyone gets plus five contact. Everyone gets plus 10 contact. Everyone gets plus 15 contact at tier three. Uh, I, I don't know if that's going to be nerfed. That seems like a lot to me, uh, 15 contact. It, it probably will start developing another new meta, which there are enough metas in this game already. I, I am not sold yet on the captain's feature at all. Uh, that's something I need to see how it develops. I need to wait and see how people use it, if people use it, if people care about it. I have always been, and I'm pretty sure I've said this on the show while recording, there are enough things that already impact gameplay in this game. It looks like they removed some of them with the inactive quirks and the this and the that, so they're, they're doing a good job trying to simplify it. Uh, but adding now a captain's element to the whole thing just seems like a lot. And again, I'm worried about another new slash potentially toxic or game-breaking meta being developed on accident. So we'll see how that goes. I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad yet. I'm not saying it's good yet. I'm not saying it's ugly yet, but it's, it's, you know, it's just a thing. Let's talk about events. Nothing looks different. We're done talking about events. We're done talking about that, 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 and that. Okay, so the things we're going to talk about now, we're going to go into custom practice to do this because most of what we need to concern ourselves with uh, is gameplay. Uh, sure, we'll be the Phillies. We're certainly not being the Astros, because they can go play in traffic. Um, uh, okay. So, things we're gonna talk about. The bat PCI exists! Oh, but Kenny, I thought the PCI was the batter's eyes! Yeah, so did I. But as you can see here, I guess I can't really pause it, as you guys can see here, there's an inner PCI called bat. I'm using it just because I think I won. I think Ramon listens to my podcast, or someone does and was like, hey, that's a great effing idea. Let's make it the bat. Wow, was, was this rookie? Hold on. I gotta see what pitch difficulty this is. Um, gameplay. That was Hall of Fame? Okay, it was really early. I guess, it, I guess it's easy to hit this year. Um, I'm a fan of the bat PCI. Counted as good for me. I think that we should begin visualizing hitting the way hitting is. And we don't hit with our eyeballs because that would hurt. We hit with a baseball bat because that's what God intended it to be done with. Um, I enjoy it. Listen, at the end of the day, PCI is all player preference. And honestly, it doesn't mean much. A lot of people play just fine without the PCI. They just move their little analog stick, use their thumb to put uh, the, the placement where the ball is. I just struck out swinging. Um, but... I enjoy the bat because it, it, it's just a different way to visualize everything. I don't really love that the bat is positioned on that downward angle that you see it on right now. I truthfully have no idea why it's positioned like that. It would probably just be better if it was the angle was lessened or if it was just flattened straight across. But you know, again, I don't understand why they do things, so maybe they have a reason for it. Um, as these pitches coming in, guys, you'll see down to the lower left... I guess I have to swing at the ball, huh? Um... You'll see the swing feedback. They talked about this in the feature premiere. I am a fan of the new swing feedback. I think they finally defined what it all means. They said verbatim. I'm going to hold down R2 here so we can look at it. Bottom left of the screen, guys. Verbatim. The number one thing on our hitting engine is swing timing. So what do they do? They put it first. The second most important thing, PCI placement. What do they do? They put it second. Of course, your attributes all matter. So those are at the top. And then the hit result is at the bottom. Now, someone on Twitter, uh, I'm going to get his name specifically. Please hold. I asked for comments before I recorded this episode. Brew City. Of course, Brew. I'm sorry. I forgot it was you who said that. Uh, a good point here. It, it doesn't impact gameplay, but just aesthetics and um, uh, just, just quality of life. Make weak slash okay slash good slash perfect contact different colors in the feedback box. Make it pop so it, you don't have to go searching for it. Great idea. I believe what he's talking about here is how it says contact, weak, EV63, exit velocity 63, launch angle minus 153. I believe he wants those to be different colors. Brew, correct me on Twitter if I'm wrong or in the YouTube comments, go ahead. I believe that's what you mean. And whatever it is you mean, I agree with it. I just want to be clear on, on what you're talking about. 
Um, things that I've also noticed, maybe because the tech test didn't have a ton of wear and tear on the servers, I feel like pitch speeds are just a tick slower. I don't think SDS actually lowered pitch speeds. I just think maybe the game is playing better. Maybe the frames aren't skipping as much. Maybe the servers are not under as much stress, like I said. Uh, it just feels like I can see the ball better. Perhaps that's because the game has been optimized for next gen. Maybe I'm... Why can't I hit the ball? Maybe just I'm a dumb, silly idiot. But I kind of feel pretty good. Uh, the other thing that I want to comment on here is... I'm fucking... Bad. First of all, that's one thing I'd like to comment on. Second thing I want to comment on uh, is that Vision is really teeny tiny and competitive. It is teeny teeny tiny. I enjoy that that is going to be a skill gap. I think that's good. I'm worried that we're all going to get exponentially worse at the game, though, because, man, PCIs are small. PCIs are teeny, 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 tiny. Now, though, when you do hit the ball, Framer Valdez doesn't throw strikes. So let's just expedite this process here. Um, hold on. How do I how do I change the batting? There we go. Let's just make this easy. I want those pitches down the middle, and I only want four seamers. I think I did that right. I only want four seamers down the middle, just, just so I can show you guys what I'm talking about here as I uncoil these wires beneath me, so I'm taking this pitch. All right, perfect. Um, contact feels like it's earned. Foul balls are a little less, not a ton, but definitely a little less. And fluky hits are not gone, but they're certainly lessened. What I like is that when I square up the ball, and don't you worry, I will in a minute, because I'm bad. But when you square up the ball, it mostly, mostly, and now it was early, goes somewhere. Or at least is hit well. Or at least my feedback makes sense. The one thing that we're still working on figuring out, and shout out to our King Scan, because I, I feel like I shout Scan out in every episode, because he's just the absolute best. There's been a problem in the community. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. When you hit it, that ball goes. Um, there's been a problem in the community with perfect perfects to the to center field but left center or right center not dead center so for kyle schwarber if i perfect perfect the ball to just left of center it dies now that doesn't make any sense scan is trying to figure out why that's potentially happening that ball was smoked is it intended to play that way are we getting major league stadiumed because balls don't carry at major league stadiums is it really reflective of how perfect you now have to be when you hit the ball? I don't know. All I'm saying, and baseball traditionalists are going to hate this, if I have someone with 125 power, and I elevate a perfect perfect, elevate, keyword there, it needs to be gone in every single stadium everywhere. To right, center, left, left, center, right, center, upside down, center. If I do it with a guy with 60 power, different conversation, I'll understand any range of outcomes that occurs. But if I do it with 125 power, you're done. That best be gone. So that's a potential very ugly thing. Because we just had a game, and it'll be the show 22, where we had so many input problems or confusions or things didn't make sense or things weren't registering correctly. The last thing that we want, when hitting feels good, let me make it abundantly clear. I love the way hitting feels in this tech test. It's just a tech test. I hope it is true for 23. I love the way hitting feels right now. But if my perfect perfect ain't gonna be homers, I'm gonna be upset. Not every perfect perfect needs to be a hit. But if 125 power elevates a perfect perfect, it best be gone. So I'm just curious what SDS uh, figures out or decides to do on that. Was it intentional? Is it a bug? Is it just a tech test thing? We'll get there. But that is definitely one area of concern that I'd like to kind of just pay attention to as the weeks go on and the game's out and we get to play it and feel it and actually test it more than we've tested it now. Like, yes, this, this has been out for a week and we've probably had, I don't know how many swings happen, a couple million, 500 million swings. I don't know how many swings there have been. It's a decent sample size. And that's part of why the tech test is important. SDS wants to see the live feedback from the community playing, all the stats. But that's concerning. 
Perfect Perfect's elevated need to go. One other thing I like about hitting, as you see there as I hit at the opposite field. Late side of good, other than that perfect perfect problem in center field, doesn't seem to be much of an issue anymore with getting hits. You know, they said in the feature premiere they wanted the field to seem like it was playing bigger, and it really does feel like it. Shooting gaps makes sense. Line drives down the left or right field lines aren't somehow caught by a gliding left fielder. Like, that never made sense. Balls that should get down are getting down. It looks like they reintroduced topspin or maybe elevated the amount of topspin you get on certain types of hits. I don't know. Hitting just feels nice. This is the first time hitting has felt this nice in a while. And it has the potential to be the best hitting has felt. Now I'm talking feel. I'm still not talking results. Results we have to wait and see. But feel-wise, intuitiveness, this is the best it's felt. You guys might disagree with me on that. Feel free to hit me in the comments with your thoughts. That's I encourage them, especially with a tech test. This is a make or break year for MLB The Show 23. MLB The Show, I guess, specifically. But I am a large fan of how this feels. I really am. And I'm using lefty-lefty Kyle Schwarber with 79 power versus left and just mostly filleting the ball all over the field. Again, I know it's cockshot fastballs. That's what I set it to. But that was just to show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, all right. We're going to take two more hacks to see if I can recreate that perfect, perfect to center field thing. And then we're going to talk about fielding because fielding is going to be the thing that really, really messes some folks up. I will say it messed me up quite a bit. I'm still, I'm getting better. I'm still not great, but we'll talk about that momentarily. All right. This is going to be the one to center field. No, it's not. All right. One more. I was late. If I get a fastball low, I'll do it to center field. Otherwise we'll just move on to fielding. Let's see. And we want to field with infielders right now, specifically. Okay, I'm just bad. We change it. We go to practice type. We go to fielding. Uh, batter is, we. Uh, I don't care. Hit position, hit type. Do I get to do the whole field? Oh, I do. Okay. So, throwing to bases is now going to be a big fat problem. This this sliding meter is going to be tough. Or whatever you want to call it. This, this, this gradual moving meter is going to be difficult. Um, a couple things I've noticed. You have more time to react to it than you think. Will you hit the ball on the ground, please? You have a lot more time to react to the meter than you think. It used to move so quickly in 22 and then previous years, but it actually, like, you know, it's not ridiculous. There you go. Look, I did a perfect throw. It's ridiculous. You have time. Just watch, react. Watch, react. You don't have to rush. There's no need to rush. See, I rushed that one. And it was a perfect throw by 22 standards. But by this game standards, it was 18 feet up the line and didn't even make it to the catcher. Oh my god. Will you throw a... Or I mean, hit a ground ball. For the love of god. Can I can I impact how it, how that does? Let's see. Can, you, can, I, can I do that? Fielding practice? Hit type? I can. Grounder. I didn't realize I could do that. I was yelling at the game for no reason. Ramon, I'm sorry. Super dives kind of still exist, but the now the, the the importance of throws actually makes it hard. And I kind of like that we're not just asleep at the wheel in the field. Look, I just got a routine grounder and it was a routine throw, same as always. Perfect. That doesn't need to change. But it's those it's those plays that like make you dive, make you throw in the run, make you hit a cutoff guy. Like things like that are gonna be difficult. And that's good for increasing the skill gap. There you go. See, I just had to range to my left, hold the meter, make the throw. I like it. Listen, it's going to be hard. There are going to be more errors than we've ever had before. If you can't field, sucks to suck, get better at it. Because those of us who are going to put in the work, listen, I'm not saying I'm going to be the best fielder that's ever existed. I'm not going to be, but I'm going to practice. I'm going to put in the work and I'm going to get competent enough that I don't have 12 errors a game. There are going to be games where your opponent quits because there are errors made. They should be better at it. You know, it, listen, games like this should have skill gaps. Any game that features online head-to-head -head should have skill gaps. I don't want to punish players that don't care about playing competitively. But these are all things we can practice and get better at. Just like we had to learn pinpoint, we'll learn this. You know, uh, the feedback has been mixed, I think, on the, the, the throwing meter. Mostly trending positive and a couple more people who are just like, oh, I'm a little concerned that, you know, it's going to be going to be a, a free for all. I like it. I'm a fan. I don't know what else there is to say. We're going to take a few more ground balls here because we really haven't had too many crazy plays. 
But like you can see, it's a lot of the times it's going to be a straight up ground ball. Not much is going to change. It's the times that it's going to be, you know, different than it's ever been that you have to pay attention. You can't fall asleep at the wheel. That's why, you know, actually tuning in and focusing is key. Um, another thing I noticed that the catching throwing meter has not changed. That's exactly the same. Uh, so that's, that's good to know. I don't know why that would change, but just, you know, figured I'd point it out. That was not a ground ball for what it's worth. That was a line drive. The game lied to me. Um, I think that if you put in decent hours in the tech test, by the time the game drops, you will already have gotten close to mastering fielding. I didn't play the tech test a ton. I studied everyone's responses a fair bit. Oh, see, there you go. Diving play, made the play, bad throw. I rushed my throw. Uh, I, but I do think, I do think everything will be okay. I've seen people's responses. I've seen people's concerns. I like mostly, as I kick my microphone here or kick the wire, uh, mostly things will be okay. Mostly I'm a fan. Um, fielding now in the outfield... Let's switch it to the outfield really quickly. Fielding, 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 fly ball. Okay. So plays in the gap are going to be tough. Well, this one's not a great example because Nick Castellanos is a literal squid in right field. If you get a fly ball and there's runners moving and you got to hit cutoffs, you're going to have to really time these throws well. It's going to be... Ho okay, fly balls don't mean home runs, Jose. Keep the ball in the yard, you little bastard. Um... Okay, here we go. So we're going to throw it home, even though we don't have to. Notice how it moved. Notice how we waited. Notice how we timed it. Luckily, it seems to be pretty responsive. I Oh my God, Altuve's teeing off. Um, I, I know there's not... I, I know there are consistent problems with input lag on PS5 controllers, but I'm playing on PlayStation right now. Oh my gosh, he's got... He's another homer. Maybe we rob it? No, that was actually pretty close. Um, I know PS5 controllers have consistent lag problems. Throwing the third. Look, we were late. But you can... That's important, too. You can undo your bad throw by just changing it to a different base. So, that's a cheat code, by the way. All you guys can use that for free. But, going back to my lag point, it's stopping where it should. When I'm letting go of that button and asking it to stop, it's stopping. So, you know, it, it, it's okay. It's fine. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to throw it to second. It slid. We got a perfect throw. Bingo, bango. We got it. I think just this this just requires practice. If people don't use custom practice a ton, this would be a great thing to do it on. We all laughed last year when they were like, oh, wow, fielding practice. Ho, 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 ho. We don't need that. Now it kind of makes sense. Now I see why we'd need it. I wish they would have introduced this last year. It would have made a lot more sense. Okay, we're done with we're done with fielding. Uh, we're done with fielding. I think that was plenty, plenty to talk about, plenty to see, plenty to look at. Uh, listen, guys, the tech test... Those are my opinions. There are good things, bad things, and ugly things. The tech test is important that they do it every year. I'm glad they've been doing it. I'm glad that they've made it shareable so we could talk about it like this in this forum. It's not invite only. It's open public beta. This tech test, in summation, has me quite excited for MLB The Show 23. We need to all as a community realize that no sports game or yearly title of any type of game will be perfect but it feels really good we didn't talk about pitching because pitching doesn't seem much different um it feels smooth as it should a couple pitchers have different deliveries but nothing to, to talk about really the big changes are in hitting and fielding um and then just some aesthetic stuff which i hope they clean up i am hopeful i'm beyond hopeful now i am somewhere between hopeful and confident that MLB The Show 23 is actually not going to make me want to blow my brains out. So, we're going to end there. <laughs> With that, make sure you have commented any thought of yours on the tech test down below. I want to hear them all. I want to read them all. I want to uh, conversate with them all. I've been trying to get better at answering YouTube comments. I think you all know that I'm doing my best. But uh, look out in the coming weeks for an update video on the channel on YouTube. Uh, I generally, generally think update videos are very dumb and very silly. But as we enter a new year, a new game cycle, and with me trying out some new forms of content coming up in MLB The Show 23, we're going to do an update video so you guys know what to expect. Uh, podcast listeners, Apple and Spotify, this won't impact you. The show the podcast every Tuesday, not going anywhere. It's just about additional content 
for YouTube and a little bit on Twitch that you guys, if you're interested in, twitch.tv slash kdjtv, kdjtv611 on YouTube, come by, follow, like, subscribe if you'd like to. Um, those content changes are more so for YouTube. The podcast on Tuesday is not going anywhere, I promise. Uh, but be on the lookout for that within the next couple weeks. I'm trying to scheme some stuff, brainstorm some stuff, and then we'll make it happen. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed the text test. I didn't even get to tell you guys we have legend reveals this week. We have a feature premiere this week. We'll cover all of that in the next episode. We're at the point where there's so much going on that I'm excited for Emily the Show 23 to just get in my lap already. I want to just lather it up and that's it. Talk to you guys next week.